Hello! Today I'm gonna show you how to make this bead embroidered ring. So what you're gonna need for this tutorial is some bead foundation, just a little bit. This one is about 2 inches, 5 centimeters. I'm using lazy stiff stuff because that's what I got to work with. And you also need some backing. This is ultra suede. Just anything that doesn't fray is perfect for making backing. Then you're also going to need some 11 0 seed beads and some 15 0 seed beads. These are all by Toho. And then you need a couple of 3 millimeter bugles. Then you'll need one 8 millimeter round bead and then two 6 millimeter round beads and two 4 millimeter round beads. Then you also need an adjustable ring base, something simple. And you also need a beading needle, of course. I'm using a size 11 tulip needle, and then you're gonna need some thread. This is Sona beading thread, it's my favorite. I'm using about two meters, I find it just enough so I don't have to cut off any more thread, but that is really up to you. So first off, what I like to do here is I like to tie a little knot at the end of my thread just so it is going to be secured when I go through the bead foundation. So what I do normally is I take the back side and just go through it, not completely, just a little bit and pull it. Through. Make sure you work from the middle of the bead foundation piece because we're gonna start with the big 8mm. And as you can see with the knot, it's secure, it's not moving anywhere. So then you just sew, sew through. beginning at the front of it. Well, it doesn't matter which front you use really, just on the opposite side of where you put the knot. So now you're going to pick up the 8mm bead. Then you're going to measure where you want to kind of stitch it down. It doesn't be, it doesn't have to be 100% perfect because you're gonna make a couple of passes through this one. It is a big bead and I personally like to pass through it a couple of times just to make sure it's secured in place and so it doesn't move around. Anyway, go, go through this a couple of times so you feel it's secured and I'll be back. Okay, so I've stitched it down now to the point where I find that it won't move anymore. So now we're going to start working with seed beads and the basic bead embroidery st stitches. So what you're going to do is you're just going to move your needle through the bead foundation next to that 8mm bead. So what I like to do during the first first start when I add seed beads uh, is that I like to pick up one bead. This is the basic uh, bead embroidery stitches we're gonna do. It's called back stitch. I like to start with one bead in the beginning because I find it giving more clean lines. But of course you can do however you want. So what you do is 
you move that bead down to the bottom of the thread where it comes out from the bead foundation and you kind of move the bead with your needle to where you feel it's not going to move backwards anymore and then you stitch it down like so and why it's called back stitch is also used in sewing that stitch by the way is because you go backwards so now I came out from the back side of the bead that I just stitched and now I'm gonna go through it once more and now I'm gonna pick up two 11 o seed beads I'm gonna do the same with those like I did with the first one. Just slide them down all the way to that first bead. And if you pull the thread, you can kind of line it up around the bead and you just pull your needle through there. This is what I do different personally when I do the back stitch in the beginning. Since I sew down uh, one bead in the beginning, I'm gonna go through backwards again now. Skip that first bead and go through those two beads that I just stitched just behind them. then I'm gonna go through them again with my needle thread. What I do now is again I pick up two seed beads. I like to work with two beads at a time with an exception for the start because I like to secure the first bead because I like to work with straight lines and if the seed beads don't get, don't, don't get stitched down correctly, they're gonna bulge up. It's gonna look messy. So again, you do the same thing. But I'm gonna do something different when I do the backs, when I go backwards this time. So now you have stitched those two down. What you do now is you go back through three beads instead so those two are the ones you just stitched and you also go through the previous one so this one is pretty much called back stitch to three because you stitch down two beads and then you go back through three beads instead I like to work that way because it really lines up nicely. And I'll show you again, just so you get the hang of it. Pick up two seed beads and you slide them down all the way to the beads you already stitched onto your foundation. And you stitch it down there. And you go back through three seed beads. So one seed bead from the previous round and the two seed beads that you just stitched on. Like so. so now you do this 
all the way around and you're, until you're back at the start. Okay, so I finished this round and I'm coming out of the two last seed beads that I've just sewn. So what I like to do now is to straighten this line is that I like to go through all of them once. This is something I really recommend you to do. It makes the stitch sit more steady and it also straightens the lines. Okay, so what you do now is that you go, you stitch down your needle just so you get on the opposite side of your beadwork. And now you're gonna go up really anywhere around around the eight millimeter after the seed bead roll because we're gonna stitch on a six millimeter pearl now. I just put it there. Doesn't matter where you put it, it will look the same anyway. So you do the same now with the 6mm bead as you did with the 8mm I showed you in the beginning. Stick it there, stitch it down. And you do the same here, you stitch you go through it a couple of times and stitch it down so it's secured in place and then we'll be back. Okay, so the 6mm is secured in place. What you do now is that you stitch your needle through just in the corner there, I don't know if you can see my needle, just in that corner. Now you're gonna pick up two 11 OC beads. You're gonna do the back stitching again and, and kind of frame that 6mm bead the same way as we did the 8mm. I'm picking up two here because I feel, I feel comfortable with that. It's really up to you, you can pick up one as well. But two works. So, push them down with my needle just to make sure that they're gonna be secured and it look nice and tight. What I like to do myself personally when I start with two seed beads like this is when I do the back stitch I like to go through just one just one of the beads that I stitched on. I like to vary my backstitch a lot. <laughs> it's just a personal preference, you can do whatever you want. Again, you pick up two 11 seed beads and keep repeating the backstitch really. Pulling down to the other two seed beads that are stitched on on the foundation and just And now I go through two seed beads. Two seed beads I just stitched on. You can go through three, it doesn't matter really on this point. But it's just the beginning and I said I like to vary myself a lot in the beginning. So you do this back stitch two, three again until you reached all around and we'll be back. Okay, so I've stitched down the whole 
row of 11 mm CPs around that 6 mm and I also passed through it once like I showed you earlier on the 8 mm so what you do I'm gonna do next is that you stitch your needle through just that corner there and pull your thread through it and now we're gonna pick up uh, four millimeter bead and stitch it down in the corner same principle again is a bigger bead so stitch it down a couple of times just to secure it Okay, so I've stitched down at 4mm to the point where I find it secure. So now we're gonna go here in the corner just between the 4mm and the row of seed beads from the 6mm. I think you can see it. And you just pause. Just pull your thread through there. And now we're gonna do the back stitch again, just around. Four, four millimeter round bead that we just stitched on, and then we'll do it back. Okay, so I beaded that around four millimeter. And now I'm gonna go through the bead foundation in this corner between the eight and six millimeter bead. I think you can see where the nail is coming out. Yeah, like so. And now you're gonna pick up another four millimeter bead. And yeah, as you can see, I decided to change color at the last minute. So you just do the same here. You stitch it down until you find it secured in place and then you do another row of back stitch around it just like you did with this four millimeter and the other beads okay so i finished up around the, the last four millimeter bead and now you're gonna come out of this corner here yeah just that and now you're gonna pick up the last six millimeter bead and you're gonna do exactly the same here as you've been doing all along around those four six and eight millimeter bead and also do that backstitch row around it and then we'll be back Okay, so now you have stitched down all the pearls and now you're just gonna go through any of these side corners. I'm just going through there. It doesn't matter where you go, just go through a corner because if you go through a corner it's gonna be easier for what we're gonna do next. So now we're gonna pick up two 50 you now seed beads and do the same you slide them down to, your, to the bottom of your thread and you just work back stitch and go through them again I'm going through just one bead again since I mentioned earlier that that's how I like to do it when I start stitching my beads on so now you're gonna work back stitch with the 15 0 seed, seed beads all around all around until you come back to where you began and then we'll be back okay so I've stitched down the 11 L seed beads all around and now we're gonna move on to the pupil beads and 
yeah I forgot to say that I also pass through all the beads once just, just like I did with the other ones so now you're gonna come out in this corner and now you're gonna start picking up bugle beads I personally prefer to pick up one bugle bead at a time why? because they are famous for being sharp and cutting up thread and uh, I like to pass through them twice or more just to make sure that they're not gonna move around because when they move around they have a tendency of cutting up the thread because their edges can be sharp so like this this basic batch stitch on these two you just pick up one at a time really like this I'm gonna stitch them down twice I feel that that's enough because I'm gonna pass through them anyway so I'm gonna pick up another one and do the same So what you'll do now is that you keep picking up bugle beads until you reach this point. And if you don't fit another bugle bead, don't fret, I'll show you how to how to fix that because I don't think I'm gonna fit all the bugle all bugle beads to this point as I didn't do it in my original design either. So Stitch down until you can't fit any more bugle beads down to that corner and we'll be back. Okay, so I've stitched down all the bugles and things didn't go exactly like I planned. As you see, I got all the bugle beads in there and, and no space in between. So that actually worked perfectly, but if you got it like, like in my first design, I'm gonna show you on my piece here what happened. Don't know if you can see it. See it here are the bugle beads, and here I added two 50 no seed beads in the matching colors of the bugle beads. So that's how you can solve it, and I hope that's understandable because I'm not gonna be able to show it in this piece. So what you're gonna do now. is that you're gonna come out from this corner next to the bugle beads oh yeah and I stitched through the bugle beads a couple of times with my thread just to secure them what I'm gonna do now is that I'm gonna pick up two 15 mm seed beads again and do back stitch just to frame in those bugles all the way around just just around the bugles hope that's understandable when I've done that I'll be back and we're gonna go to the next step okay so I've stitched those 15 holes in place and now our bead and birdie part of this ring is completed what we do now is you stitch your thread through on the back side and you stitch just on the side like this through through where your thread has been going through the beadwork like this just to secure it and then you take a scissor and you cut it loose and now we're gonna cut out our beadwork as well. Uh, this is it is important that you don't 
cut too close because then your, your beads gonna fly off, fly off. So this is the distance I use, I normally do. You can see that it's really hard to cut at the same time as it's as I am also trying to have you see what I'm doing. So, so this step, you can just toss it away or keep it if you want to do something smaller. So, this is how this, it looks now. What I like to do also now, you can see this lot of, I don't know if you can see it, there's a lot of little fluff around from the bead foundation, so I like to use a lighter and just swipe it fast through because I don't like fluff. <laughs> it looks messy. Like so. So what you're gonna do now, pretty much attach this to the ring base and the backing. So gonna take this and just simply just gonna measure and see how much I would need on the backing and just cut it out this is gonna go under for me so what I like to do is to be sure is that I take a mark and just quick and just gently do some lines so I can see pretty much where the, the ring back is gonna go. So this the lines are just guide lines that I just go on. So I'm gonna try draw on a couple of more guidelines. Do this and I just Line it out like this. And I also mark the center with like that. And now what I do normally here is that I fold this in the middle and I All the way, just where I cut, just where I made a cross. I do the same on the opposite side here. Fold it double, and it kind of cut a cross on it. And since the ring base has this, like here, I'm gonna cut off a little bit of this as well. So how you're gonna attach it is pretty simple, you turn it around and you stick the ring base through it like this. You can pretty much just, just so and then you can put on the beading board here and see how you want it now this is a free f pretty much a free form design you can place it however you want so what i'm gonna do now i'm gonna put some glue on this one i'm using this gem tack fabric or some fabric so it's a it's a really nice glue i use it for a lot of uh, bead embroidery pieces Not too much, just enough. Now, you just place it on there, press it, and now you're gonna let this cure until it's secured in place. 
Okay, so now the ring has dried and we are going to do the finishing touches, the edges of the piece. So we're going to attach our thread first and I've already made a little knot at the very tip of my thread and so what we're gonna do is to find a little piece here this kind of loose we're gonna pass pass through it skip skip the backing when you're doing this because the purpose with this is to hide the knot that's why I've been like this so for the etching we're gonna do brick stitch so with bead embroidery when starting brick stitch we're gonna pick up two 15 OC beads if this it's the first time you're doing brick stitch on, on bead embroidery you you may also use 11 OC beads since they are bigger so what we do is we go through from the back side the ultra suede and the bead foundation like so and pull it down oh no you're gonna notice Now you're gonna notice it's laying like that. So what we do is go through the underside of the last bead there. Pull a thread through it. And as you can see it's starting to lay flat down like that and now for each other row you're gonna pick up one bead and just do the same from the back starting from the ultra suede and then go through the bead foundation <laughs> it's really a bite about eyeballing when you're stitching down on the foundation and then you go back through it again I'm gonna show you again just so you can get a hang of it so you're going from the back side through the ultra suede and also the bead backing Deed foundation, sorry. Then you pull your thread. Now you go through the bead from underneath it. So you repeat this all the way around until you you're back at the start. Okay, so I've stitched that whole row and there's one gap and the another bead doesn't fit in between there so we are gonna tie this together so what we do is we're gonna go through that very first bead from the top down so it comes out just there don't stitch through any fabric yet. See? It's doing that. And what we do now is turn it backwards and we go through the bead foundation and the ultra suede just above that gap. That is free. <laughs> and now 
we go up through that same bead again from the bottom. And what we do now is that we're gonna do that finishing edge. So what I do is I pick up one 50 now seed bead. And now I'm gonna turn it backwards because I find it easier to stitch that way. So what we do is that we go and stitch through that same bead. In other words, the bead right next to the one that our thread is coming out through. Just pull like that. And it should line up like that. And now we go through the next bead from the bottom to the top. And we pick up one 15 now seed bead. And again go through the next bead, the one that is next to bead that our thread is coming out of. And then we go up again through the next bead from the bottom to the top. It can be a bit complicated sometimes with the ring the ring itself getting in the way but to keep fiddling. I'm gonna stop here and all you need to do is repeat what I just did all the way until you can't add another bead. It all depends on if you have an uneven number or an odd number. It doesn't really matter though because I because it's not very noticeable. So I'll see you again when you've done that. Okay, so we've added all the etching. So what you're gonna do now is uh, remove the thread, pretty much so. What you do is that you work your thread into the beadwork, just so nothing will fall off. And you work until you get like this, one of the beads at the bottom, but on the inside of the beadwork is where the needle should come out this time. So, and now you put your needle just through there so it comes out on the opposite side. And pull, pull a bit tight just so it falls just so the thread goes into the work itself and now you cut it and there you have a ring